Nacho. That's right. I mean, the guys, I mean, you know, the guys on the machines, let's give them a long time. Land on the spot, on the job, and they've done an amazing, amazing work. Amen. 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 Father, in the name of Jesus, Hallelujah. we just want to thank you again for the joy of being in your house. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift of each and every one of us here. Each one of these, your people, is a gift. A gift to your house. A gift to the body of Christ. Holy Spirit, we say welcome. Bring illumination of God's word to the transformation and the healing of our lives. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, as Jackie has said, um, we come from Uganda. That's where we're serving. And Uganda um, is located in Africa, of course. And sits on the equator. It's halfway between Cairo in Egypt and also Cape Town in South Africa. So really, when you come to Uganda, it's like you've come to the heart of Africa. It is um, it's smaller than New Zealand in land size. But has a population of now coming to 14 million people. to That's the population of Uganda in a country smaller than New Zealand. Of course, you compare that with New Zealand. New Zealand is, uh, you know, coming to four, four million people. Now, of course, when we tell that to our people, they say to us, "Do people in New Zealand know the scripture that says, 'Go ye into the whole world, multiply and fill the earth'?" <laughs> So then we say, oh, ah, yes, of course they do. But how do they interpret that scripture? Now I remember one time Jackie said to them, Now, since you people in Uganda are very good at that scripture, you come to New Zealand and do the job for us. So if you begin to see a lot of Ugandans come to, to New Zealand, you watch out, you Tongana, Tongan guys, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, glory to God. Well, now I'd like to go into God's Word and share with you the message that the Lord has put on my heart. It says the power of one thing. The power of one thing. Did you know that God, it takes, God doesn't need too many things to change your life. It may just take only one word. 
One word from the Lord. That would change your life forever. And now as we journey 2017, it's my prayer that this evening the Lord will do something. Will say a word to you. Or will do something with your life. That will change your life forever. The power of one thing. I want you to turn your Bibles with me. Uh, to the book of Luke, chapter 10, and we're going to start from verses um, 38 to 42. This is how it goes. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to the village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Verse 39. Verse 39 says, She had a sister called Mary who sat at the feet, at the Lord's feet, listening to what he said. But Martha, that is verse 40, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that he had, that, that about all the preparations that had to be made, she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Verses 41 says, Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Oh my goodness. I want us to see if we can learn something from these two women. Martha and Mary. Mary. Good friends of Jesus Christ. I want us to go into their home. I want us to visualize and see something that we can learn about their, 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 uh, you know, their interaction with Jesus Christ. Now, as I've ended my reading, Jesus says to Martha, 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 you're worried and troubled about many things. But really one thing is needed. Hallelujah. Yes. One thing is necessary. Amen. And your sister Mary has chosen it. 
And Jesus said, and it will never be taken from her. Now, I think for us, in order to appreciate these words, in order to appreciate the power of these words, we also need to look at a few verses from uh, maybe two men. That talk about one thing. The first person I would like us to look at is King David in the book of Psalms 27 verse 4. He says, I ask of the Lord, this is what I seek. One, yes, I ask of the Lord and this is what I seek. Psalms 27 verse 4. One thing that I desire that will I seek after. He says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. That is Psalms 27 verse 4. King David said one thing. Hallelujah. Have I desired. Yes. And will I seek after. And he tells us what that one thing will be. Then we move over into the New Testament and we have another amazing man of God called Apostle Paul. Chapter 3, verse 13. Chapter 3 of Philippians. Uh, chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Brethren, I do not consider myself to have apprehended it. But, but it says, One thing I do. Yes. One thing. Amen. is forgetting what is behind it's like one thing I do forgetting all my failure success 2016 forgetting forgetting past forgetting everything in the past one and straining toward, uh, toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So, so in other words, Paul is saying, if I was to summarize my life to do one thing, one goal that is worth dying for, just one thing, is to forget everything in the past yeah. and keep pursuing yeah. Jesus Christ. Oh. Hallelujah. Amen. So if, if you were to summarize your life and, and focus on one thing as we enter 2017. 
What would it be? So as we go back into our text, let us see what we can learn from these two women. The power of one thing. This doesn't mean that we're not going to do other things. We're going to do other things as well because we're still here in this body, in this world. But it's important to have our focus right. And we know the most important thing we have to focus on so let's go back to the lives of these two women and see whether we can pick it up now we're told in verse 38 of Luke chapter 10 that as Jesus and his disciples were on their way he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. What comes to you, what comes to your mind, my friend? I think, I think what comes to my mind, I see a very good start here. A very good start. A very good start. Your home is like your heart, if you like. We see a woman called Martha opening her heart to Jesus. The Bible says, Behold, I stand at the door of your heart and knock. When you open for me, I will come in and eat with you and drink with you. And do life together with you. So Martha opens, opens, you know, opens her home to Jesus. And probably it wasn't Jesus alone because we are told he had his disciples as well. She opened her home, so that's a very good beginning, a very good start. But I want you to notice now how the story is unfolding. Martha has welcomed Jesus to come into the home. Now we are told in verse, 13, uh, verse 39, she had a sister called Mary. Notice what the sister does. The Bible says she sat at the Lord's feet listening to whatever Jesus said. Wow. I want you to notice something here. The first sister opens the home, the door. But the second sister, we are told she went, the Bible doesn't say she, you know, she could have gone and sat in the corner of the house. And maybe looked on what is going on here with this man. No, 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 no. This is what Mary does. She goes right to the feet of Jesus Christ. You know, she could have gone at the feet of any other man or any other disciple. But, but she, she, she knew 
what she wanted to do. She just went to the feet of Jesus and sat at the feet of Jesus. And the Bible says that not only did she sit at the feet of Jesus, she was listening to every word that Jesus Oh. Are you learning something? Yes. Listening to every word. Now, let me tell you, friends. Whether you come to Uganda or where, if you're talking to people, even if you don't speak the same language, you can't be able to tell that they are listening to you. You can't be able to tell that they are listening to you with undivided attention. <laughs> My wife and I have been married now for more than 20 years. I can be able to tell that even if, if I was talking to my wife and she's not, uh -huh, uh -huh, but really she's not with me, she's, she has already switched off. You can be able to tell. So Jesus was able to tell. This woman was seated at, at his feet. And then she was soaking in every word Jesus was saying. To God be all the glory. Let's see. Let's see how the story goes now. Now, in verse 14, yes, but Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. In King James it says, Martha was distracted with much serving. Now, is serving God? No. God has called us to serve Him. God has called each one of us into the ministry of His service. But the Bible tells us that although Martha was serving, but she was distracted, she was worried, she was freaking out, she was just distracted, as Jesus says, by so many things. She was distracted by so many things. So, the first point we see here. She was too busy serving the Lord but had no time to listen. Is it possible that you can be serving the Lord but really not listening to the Lord? Yes. Oh my goodness. As we enter 2017, may God help us to find a tune our focus. Yes. Yes, it's good to serve the Lord. But look at what Jesus prefers. 
Jesus prefers that you serve him out of first of all listening to him. Yes. The Bible says to obey is better than sacrifice. You could be doing a lot of good things. But the fact that you are not doing them according to my instructions, it's all really, it's not good. <laughs> so, in verse 40 again, we see, this is what happens. What comes out of being distracted by a whole lot of things. We see Martha coming. We see Martha losing it. If we were to put it in the language of today. Losing it, losing it, losing it. She, she, listen to what she says. She came to him and said. Lord, don't you care? What? Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Can you tell her to help me? Friends, let's 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 let's, let's visualize this. You know, where you lose your marbles to the extent that you even tell of Jesus. <laughs> Don't you care? Now, honestly, if Martha, like a whole lot of African women would do, if she wants to say something to you, she will do all kinds of tricks. <coughs> And maybe drop things down and you, you don't want to lose face in front of the visitor, do you? Well, at least you write something somewhere. And maybe you drop it to them. I like my mother would do sometimes. Uh, she might say, uh, Hillary, can I say something to you? It will whisper something to you. And, and then she will bite your ear. <laughs> Will determine how high, how far you can go. 
The attitude was not right. The service was good. Jesus and, and his disciples needed to eat. But honestly, to lose it. And you end telling of Jesus. And he, and he even accused him that he doesn't care. Was out of line. I remember some few years ago. I think it might have been in mid 90s. New Zealand was losing at every rugby game. Because Australia was winning everything. They were winning in um, they were winning you know in netball, rugby. You know they were winning at every game. Then I remember one time going to bed. And this is what I said to God. I said, God, you are so unfair. New Zealand is losing every game. And as I was going to bed, I had the Lord rebuke me. Saying, Hillary, I love the New Zealanders as much as I love the Aussies. Whoa! I tell you from that time, I took the rebuke from the Lord. <laughs> I love the Aussies. I love all people. I love all people. I don't have favorites. I love all people. So I was like, Martha here, you know, don't you care? Surely the Lord cares more than anyone yes. else. We are told that Jesus said to uh, Martha, this, this verse is 41. Martha, Martha. Martha, Martha. Why would you call somebody like two times or three times? If I was to call Anna, Anna, Anna. That means really, I want to get her attention. She's not listening. I want to get her attention. Martha, Martha. Maata, Maata. You are worried and upset about many things. You are upset and worried about many things. You were upset and worried about many things in 2016. Is that going to be the same story in 2017? Worried and upset about many things. Do you know the Bible says none of us can add one day to his life by worry? Apostle Paul says, be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication. Yes, yeah. And, and the peace of God that passes all man's understanding will guard your heart. So the first point we've seen here 
we see that Martha was too busy serving the Lord and had no time to listen to the Lord. The second point we see here, she was worried about too many things. And because of that, she started blaming other people, even blaming Jesus. Now somebody might say, Oh, the woman was under pressure. And I tell you, many of us will come under pressure in different ways. Life, you know. But, but, when, but when the motive, when the motivation is pressure and you, you and it takes over. And, and maybe you're worried and whatever, you simply break down. You, you won't do the right thing. But if your motivation continues to be love, you are doing what you're doing because you love the Lord. Then you are not going to break under fire. You are going to remain patient under fire. You remain patient under fire. To God be all the glory. Amen. So in verse 41 we see, uh, verse 42. But only one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen it and Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. Jesus said one thing that will never be taken away from you. So what is that one thing? That was that will never be taken away from you. That one thing is where you and I learn to focus on Jesus. And listen to him more than you focus on your circumstances. Two thousand and seventeen. We want to say like King David. That one thing will I do and will I seek after is to be in his presence. Yes, hallelujah. So in other words, to focus on Jesus yes. and listen to his commands. Because at the end of the day, it's only your relationship with Jesus that can never be taken away from you. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, in his presence. Hallelujah. Amen. How do we create the presence of God? The Bible says in the, in the praises of his people, God dwells in the praises of his people. King David also talks about to behold the beauty of the Lord. I behold the beauty of the Lord. And, and how I understand the beauty of the Lord? Look, it's by really meditating on His Word. Thinking and reflecting what His Word means to me, how it applies to me. 
His word says to you, you are my child. His word says to you, you are special. Yes. His word says to you, I have called you to be a head and not a tail. I have called you to be above, not beneath. I have a good plan for you. Notice it says a plan not to harm you. Even when sometimes it looks tough, but a plan really to give you a good future and a hope. King David also talks about inquiring in his temple. Really, that is, you know, meditating on his word with undivided attention. And as you do this, it makes your friendship with Jesus grow more and more. Your intimacy with the Lord will grow more and more. And that's one thing, my friend, that can never be taken away from you. Your husband may die, may go. Your wife may die, may go. You may lose your job. You may lose everything. But I tell you one thing that can never be taken away from you. It's your relationship with Jesus. He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. Even unto the end of the age. Yes, hallelujah. Are we together? May God bless you so much. Thank, thank you so much for giving me your hearing. I'll hand over to my sister. Amen.